hello guys welcome to another episode of my life experiences where zinyanewa sosola here your usual host if you are new to this channel this is a place where i share with you some of the experiences that i've gathered in life and the lessons i've learned from them with the hope that someone may listen be inspired and learn from these experiences so today guys i just want to share with you some experiences that i learned once I started associating myself with this charismatic Christian movement, or what I may call the born again Christian movement. Now, my story is that when I was young, growing up, I had always had this desire to grow closer to God. I had this desire to know more about Jesus Christ, the power of this resurrection. I, I just had this desire to grow in my Christian walk. So that was my desire growing up. Now, Going to secondary school in Form 1, I met this um, fellowship of Christians it, who called themselves the Born Again Christians. And um, having met these people, I said, if this is my chance to associate with these people, perhaps they may help me in my growth, in my Christian work. So I started fellowshiping with, fellowshiping with these people and every once in a while there used to come this powerful man of god he would preach then he would pray for people and after the altar call people would just fall down in the spirit just falling down and one day in my christian curiosity he came he finished preaching he made an altar call and i decided to go um, in front just to experience this power of god by myself so he started praying, he prayed for people, and people had already fallen down, down the line under the Spirit of God. And he came to me, he started praying for me, and people were already, ushers were at the back, ready to hold me when I'm falling down. And he started praying for me, and I could actually feel him pushing me backwards. He pushed me backwards, he was pushing me backwards. I would literally feel that this guy is pushing me backwards. He pushed me hard so that I, I, I felt even to hold myself. And I just went down. These people just held me until I fell backwards. But getting up from there, as a young person, I actually knew that this was definitely not the power of God. This was definitely not the Spirit of God. I was a little bit discouraged. However, I'm thankful to God because that experience did not put me down as a Christian. I still forged ahead in my walk towards knowing Jesus Christ. Another experience that I came across is that the church that I used to fellowship with, one day they invited him, a preacher from elsewhere. He was from outside Malawi. And he came with this teaching about seed, seed offerings, you know, saying that you should give a seed and you get a blessing. And he, he started with giving testimonies of how people had been blessed at the churches where he had visited. So he gave us testimonies about the churches he had just been, he had just been visiting and how God had poured out his blessing over all those people who had given the seed. Now he started preaching, he preached, he preached, very charismatic person and a very powerful moving sermon. People were so moved and they were invited to offer the seed that they want to give. And the people would just stand up, I would give, I would give 50,000, I would give 100,000, I would give so many large amounts of money. I mean, the kind of giving that people gave right there, I had never experienced it ever since I had been at that church. There were people who were struggling there at that church and they managed to pull out from their pockets and they gave with the belief that if they give this seed, they'll be blessed by God. So he took, he, 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 after preaching, he, he was sweaty and he took off his sweaty jacket and he would invite these people. He had distributed envelopes and the people were putting the money and their name in the envelopes and they would bring the envelope, um, throw it in the offering basket and he would just take that jacket hug the sweater jacket, uh, hug every person, each person as they come, he would just hug them, each one as they come, they would, he would just hug them, 
with this uh, sweater jacket. And um, my husband also tried to stand up to go and give his offering, get his blessing. But I just held his hand. I said, no, you're not going. I'm not getting this. Because for me, my, 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 my type of theology, <laughs> my belief is that God had, has promised us. Indeed, he says that give and it shall come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. That's his promise that it will happen to you when you give. But that is not the type of giving that I believe in. That you just give as a seed once of offer, offering and you'll be blessed right there and then. To me, that was a kind of blackmail to God. That you are telling God that I'm giving you this seed. Therefore, bless me. It is a kind of blackmail to me. It did not make sense. That's why I said, no, you're not going. We are not giving at this time. Because... I believe that giving should be a lifestyle. It should be a lifestyle where you give your tithes to your local church, you give your offerings, you give to the needy, you give alms, you help your family, your close families, even because even the Bible encourages us that what, what good would it be for you to give people from outside if you are not helping people from your own family. So I believe that all these areas, you need to be part of your lifestyle as a Christian. That's what I believe in. That is why that day I said, you know, you're not giving this because it sounds like blackmail to me. We live a life of, uh, of giving. We believe in giving. We try our best and we believe in the word of God. And I'm not going to be, um, to, to, be to, to participate in this, uh, to, to indulge in this type of, of giving that this man of God is, is, is asking us to, to indulge in. Now, the most disappointing thing that happened is that once that preacher went, I heard that he had taken all that money that had been given that time. And as I was saying to you, that was the most that that church had ever given. I had never seen them giving like that. They had given from the bottom of their hearts. Yet he had taken all that money, all those envelopes, on the pretext that he wanted to pray for those people. He would be praying over those envelopes. Yet as a local church, we had so many needs. We were doing a building project. We are doing so many projects as a church. We were so needy, but this person just took all that money. And as if that is not enough, I hear that once he went out of the country to his homeland, he got all the contacts with my pastor. He never reached out to him again. That was the end of the friendship between himself and my pastor. My pastor tried to reach out to him, but he could not get to that bridge. And that is when I had evidence that, yeah, I think my spirit was saying the truth to me, that don't give through this person. He is a deceiver. Yeah. So what do I want to say today, guys? I want to say that, one, preachers, whatever you do as a preacher, make sure that you do not discourage the young Christians. Like the kind of experience I had when somebody was pushing me, it was so discouraging to me. Just make sure that you don't discourage these young ones. Because it would be better for you, a milestone to be put on your neck and you're thrown to the bottom of the seas than for you to deceive the new Christians, the young ones. Don't deceive. The Spirit of God should not be forced on people. God, God's power is real. God's Spirit is real. But He moves as He wills. You don't have to force it. You don't have to push somebody to fall down for you to... Um, as evidence that the Spirit of God is moving in their place. If people don't fall down, that is okay. You've preached the word. People have responded. People have become born again. That should be enough. And the other thing uh, that I want to say is that for people um, who are Christians, we need to learn to test the spirits. Be in the word. Actually, the kingdom of God is in our hearts. The word of God is supposed to be in our hearts. The Spirit of God is supposed to, to, to talk to us. Yeah, We should be able to test the Spirit. If we are having doubts, go to the Word of God and say, what are the characteristics? What are the fruits that I should be looking for? Be able to test the Spirit. What is the Word of God saying? Because um, the Word of God says in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 4, First um, John 4, verse 1, it says that, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test spirits, whether they are from of God, because 
many false prophets have have come out into the world okay many false prophets have come out so we need to be on our guard we should test the spirit and see that is this spirit from god or this spirit is not from god so beloved do not believe every spirit but test the spirits whether they are of god because many false prophets have come out into the world so guys those are my experiences some of the suspicious and weird experiences that i have uh, gone through in the church in the body of christ nevertheless i have to say that there are so many good experiences that i've also gone ca- uh, come across that's why i'm still a christian right now and that's why i still identify as a christian these experiences are not to negate the fact that good people still exist the word of god is still powerful and we should give to the ministry of god thank you so much uh, guys that's what i wanted to share with you today don't forget to hit that subscribe button subscribe to this channel and also comment leave your comment it's so encouraging when you comment share this video and like it thank you so much guys stay blessed